I have the great honor to welcome uh, His Majesty King Abdullah II, the King of the Hashemid uh, Kingdom of uh, Jordan. Your Majesty, I have the pleasure of knowing you for almost a quarter of a century. And I have to express uh, my deep admiration for you. During such difficult times for the Middle East and the world, you have demonstrated steady leadership, always committed to advancing the lives and livelihoods of the Jordanian people. Under challenging regional circumstances and global circumstances, you have succeeded in maintaining both, I would say, stability in your country and a constructive dialogue with all sides which has made uh, Jordan an interlocutor of choice, both regionally and globally. For all uh, those reasons, the Dead Sea has been for many years as a place where the World Economic Forum uh, convenes its meeting on the Middle East. And we are so uh, sad that we uh, couldn't come back, uh, at least for a short time. Your Majesty, your effective handling of COVID-19 is a testament of, to the strength of Jordan's effective and inclusive institutions, which uh, continue to deliver uh, with your citizen livelihoods uh, as an utmost priority. Under your leadership, Jordan has also shouldered the burden of one of the largest refugee populations in the world. And um, you have generously supported them. Your Majesty, you have called for a re-globalization, the reset that is inclusive, resilient and just, and have been a staunch but realistic champion of multilateralism and international cooperation to tackle the most significant global problems that we are faced, not just during this crisis, but I think also in the post-corona period. We now all look uh, forward to hearing from His Majesty King Abdullah the Second King of the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan. Welcome, Your Majesty. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. My uh, dear friends, it is uh, a pleasure to join your insightful discussions, and I thank uh, my friend uh, Professor Schwab for inviting me to be a part of this very important uh, uh, meeting. Um, we begin a new year with uh, many of the challenges that marked the last one still rippling into just about every sector. The pandemic continues to ravage our world, and we have barely uh, scratched the surface of its long-term humanitarian and economic implications. Yet I believe there is a glimmer of hope. Some vaccines are ready and as we start this long overdue healing process, we are better served trying to heal this together. And here we must ensure the efficient and equitable distribution of COVID vaccines as well as treatments. It is a moral duty to treat the vaccine as a global public good that ensures that low income and poor countries are not left at the end of the waiting line as high income countries buy the majority of the most promising vaccines. Amidst these challenging, um, challenging times, safeguarding the, the health and well-being of refugees remains a global responsibility. And as Professor Schwab said, as the second highest number of refugees per capita globally, Jordan continues to protect refugees uh, in its pandemic response. And we are among the first countries in the world to start vaccinating refugees for free. But international support is also essential. We must collectively work to develop new policy tools to help us address the problems of today and tomorrow. In Jordan, we have been able to double the rate of financial inclusion over the past six years by relying on digital approaches to increase access to finance for Jordanians and refugees alike. And mobile money account ownership increased as we sought innovative solutions 
to support workers' families in need. Our global priorities must also include improving access to education and reducing the digital divide while preparing the labor force for the jobs of tomorrow, which are quickly becoming the jobs of today. So investing in SMEs, uh, the backbone of growing economies, is a must to expedite recovery. And as part of our pandemic response, Jordan enabled nearly 13,000 SMEs to move from the informal to the formal economy. And we are one of the top global reformers in the Ease of Doing Business report in 2020. Our economy is ready to recover, but in collaboration with the private sector. My friends, as we work to heal together, we must use the clarity afforded to us in adversity to move confidently into a, a brighter future together. The pandemic has painfully proven to us that returning to business as usual is neither sustainable nor effective. And so let us rethink and reinvent those ever-present terms of globalization, multilateralism, and international community. Let us put equality, inclusivity, and dignity at the heart of what they stand for. Our world needs a reglobalization that seeks a sustainable, equitable, and green recovery that puts the well-being of our peoples and our planet first. We need to put the emphasis on community in international community to focus on the shared values, aspirations, and ideals that unite us. We need to turn multilateral trade into a tool for peace and shared prosperity by increasing the resilience of supply chains and fostering the integration of developing countries to promote inclusive growth. And we all need to rethink the way we deal with our planet. COVID has been a harsh reminder that what we do to nature has dangerous consequences. Let that lesson teach us not to ignore the greater pandemic of climate change. This is, I believe, an urgent crisis that we must address together through creative solutions that prioritize green investments and renewable energy. As one of the world's poorest water countries, Jordan is acutely aware of the threat of climate change. We plan for our recovery to be rooted in green development and infrastructure projects. And our attention to climate change is also key as we work to counter the global threat of food insecurity, which has become even graver in the wake of the COVID pandemic with millions of people at the threat of starvation. So we must work collectively to promote the adoption of sustainable agri-tech solutions that improve the resilience of global food systems to ensure accessibility, affordability, and quality while protecting our environment. So my friends, this pandemic has made us all equal and let that be one of the positive lessons we take from this difficult time as we look ahead. Let our empathy drive our progress and recovery as we build bridges to allow the better exchange of not only vital supplies and expertise, but also the exchange of hope and positive ideas. I hope that we let our humanity lead the way. Thank you very much, Professor Schwab. Thank you, Your Majesty. I'm um, delighted uh, that you highlight so much uh, that we are at a very critical moment, and I think we we have now see we see what uh, the reasons for unsustainability of the world are, of the course we have um, uh, chosen until now. So we have to go into the direction which you lined out. And I want to, to, to particularly um, highlight also your statesmanship by treating all your citizens 
as co-citizens, even if those are refugees, or particularly because those are refugees. But, uh, Your Majesty, let me come to your country, because um, you are, uh, you will commemorate the 100th anniversary this year of the Jordanian state since its establishment in 1921. And uh, Jordan has uh, found uh, a formula for relative peace and prosperity in the unstable geopolitical landscape. But what milestones do you hope to see achieved in Jordan in the coming years? Uh, what is the most aspirational change, Your Majesty, you have um, to in uh, bringing your country forward and to ensure your country's future? Um, thank you, Professor. I mean, obviously, uh, we in, um, in Jordan are very proud of the resilience and achievements of, of our people over the past uh, 100 years, uh, despite many regional and international upheavals. Um, and unfortunately, if we look over the past 20 years, this region um, has, has had so many challenges year after year after year. But it, it's really, I think, the Jordanian people that has allowed us to be able to continue to, to, to look forward um, and look at um, challenges and turn them into opportunities. Uh, it is important as we go through the centennial for, for, for our country is now to really identify what does the next 100 years look like. Um, and I think that with our young population, uh, with their ability to understand what is coming, um, um, I am extremely uh, optimistic and, and, and hopeful. Uh, Jordan, I think we, we've always punched beyond uh, above our weight because um, we, we, we believe to always do the right thing. Uh, you mentioned, um, you know, uh, giving vaccines to refugees. Uh, I think sometimes uh, Jordan is sometimes taken for granted for a lot of the things that they do, because I think everybody knows that Jordan will always do the right thing. But, but that allows us, I think, a stronger voice in the international community um, because we are true to our word. We, we stick um, to what we say and what we try to do to help people beyond ourselves. Um, and I think that's what, what gives us maybe uh, a, a unique perspective on, on how to move forward. As you and I discussed just before this meeting, there's a lot of challenges in 2021 as we reset um, our global aspirations. Jordan will be at the forefront of that. Our young people, again, digitally minded, looking at the, the fourth industrial revolution, I think will be in the best position to take us forward and look at the opportunities, not only for our country, uh, but for the region. And this is, I think, the year 2021, where we all have to step up and say, what can we do not only to help ourselves, but it is imperative to help others. They, uh, as uh, having been uh, so much engaged in conceptualizing the fourth industrial revolution, I have to express also, uh, let's say, my admiration for how your country has embraced, particularly with its young generation, the um, the force, uh, the, the technologies of the fourth industrial revolution, and particularly digitalization. Um, let me let me come back to a last question. Um, it is the equilibrium between taking care of the economy and taking care of the health of the people. And Jordan has uh, recently announced that uh, curfews will be lifted, schools and certain economic sectors will be reopening soon. Um, this also depends, Your Majesty, on the availability and um, capability to, to vaccinate the people uh, rapidly. Um, moving forward, how does Jordan plan to protect both lives and livelihoods while gradually reopening uh, the economy? And what are, uh, coming back to the fourth industrial revolution also, what are the sectors you um, envisage could present particularly new opportunities for growth and employment in Jordan in the post-COVID period? Well, I think we can all admit that um, um, there was no right way or, or nobody can say we were absolutely successful dealing with COVID-19. <clears throat> we all had our, our good days and bad days. Jordan, we started out extremely well. We were probably the third best country in the world. Our figures were non-existent in, 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 in COVID. 
But then, as always, complacency, people getting frustrated and not abiding by um, social distancing and, and masks. Um, by the end of, of the summer, uh, the numbers started to increase quite dramatically um, uh, in Jordan, and we got ourselves into a, a very difficult situation. Um, I, but when we were in a good position, um, we immediately thought, how do we help others? And so we managed to send uh, aid to, um, to, 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 to Western countries, to Eastern countries, uh, whether it was in PPEs, we had hospitals on standby to go to, to, to Western countries. Uh, we actually sent to Lebanon uh, a field hospital once uh, they had the, the tragic uh, bombing in, in, in the harbor. harbor. Um, and I, I think that was the ability of looking beyond ourselves. And again, uh, in retrospect, as we started getting into difficulty, countries came to help us. Uh, and I think that was a new attitude. We were very grateful, for example, to the United Arab Emirates, who um, you know, provided us with a field hospital that I just inaugurated down in the south that has really uh, taken the pressure off. We're, we're back in, in, in a good position now, but um, I think the challenge is how do we look now at the new world that we're dealing with? Um, you mentioned certain sectors, and uh, obviously we, we found at the beginning of the crisis, our medical pharmaceutical uh, industry was extremely capable and uh, was able to actually export capabilities very early onwards. Uh, food industry, uh, again, was a, a very big export that we looked at. But that led us, I think, to um, really looking again at agriculture, which I think is one of the main things uh, you'll see coming out of Jordan in 2021. Uh, alongside um, digital capability, we, we managed to really uh, come up with a lot of platforms that helped connectivity for Jordan, but also something that we exported. And, and, and so that leads me to, I think, the major challenge that we're going to face in 2021 is not just going to be um, vaccines and how that is uh, distributed fairly and equally across the globe. One of the other ch challenges that we identified, and you and I talked about this earlier on, is going to be food security. Um, as vaccines uh, are made available to people, the challenge, I think, in many countries around the world in 2021, towards the end of the year, is going to be the challenges of starvation. Um, I, I had mentioned to you before that when we look at the northern hemisphere, the northern half of the northern hemisphere, agriculture is much more capable than the southern half of uh, the northern hemisphere. And quite rightly, people feel, you know, let's think about us first before we think of, of others. Um, and so, Northern countries will be hoarding uh, grains and wheats. Um, that is going to be difficult for countries on the Mediterranean, from Morocco all the way to Pakistan, and again, if you go out towards uh, the Americas. So how do we talk to each other to make sure that we have regional packs that create redundancies? Uh, we saw this in the United States by certain states, either on the East Coast and the West Coast, uh, working together to say, what do I have to help the other? As we look at 2021, food security is going to be something that we're going to have to figure out. We're already in touch with many of the countries in the region. We, because of, uh, of Arab Spring, saw our trade routes being stopped. And as a result, we started storing. So we have an abundance of wheat and grains as Jordan. A lot of other countries in the region don't. What happens towards the end of 2021-22 when starvation starts to hit certain countries in our area? Lebanon is a crisis we have to keep looking at. The Yemen, um, I'm sure there may be countries in Africa how do we, and again, maybe my, my ask of you and, and, and any of the audience that are, 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 are listening, we need, I think, the tools of being able to communicate to each other of what do we have as extra. No country can be resilient on everything. So how do we share assets that doing an emergency can be supplied? So how do we create these regional packs that allows us to be able to provide a database or what do I have extra that may be of help to you, and vice versa, what can you do to help me as crises, and there will be some, will continue to come and challenge us over the next year or two. Your Majesty, if uh, we look at the crisis, and uh, if I take what you just said, I think the crisis, uh, the, the uh, COVID-19 crisis, taught us one thing how much we are interconnected and so my action has an impact on my immediate neighbors and vice versa and the same is true on a national level and as you just mentioned it's so much true on a global level and i also um, share with you the concern about uh, the upcoming crisis uh, in terms of uh, 
food supply for everybody. So we have to start action now and I can promise you, uh, uh, Your Majesty, the Forum will be very much engaged into this issue of uh, food security. If, um, Your Majesty, you have one um, wish uh, apart from paying attention to the issue of food security, one wish to the audience, to the large audience which we have, um, I, one wish for, for Jordan or one wish for the world, what would it be? Communication. Um, we, we need to start rethinking how we talk to each other. Um, we have seen over the past several years uh, inequalities that, as you just alluded to, we are all in this together. Um, the action uh, of one affects the other, uh, either positively or negatively. Um, and I hope that 2021, as we look at the Great Reset or the reglobalization, let's fix the problems that um, we all knew were there, but maybe it wasn't important to discuss. Um, 2020, I think, was a, a, a shock to all of us. Um, it'll take a while for many countries to recover, and we will recover at different paces. Um, but this is this is a thing that we can't afford for the grass to look greener on the other side. We always have to look at being able to help each other and think beyond ours. I, I know it's it's human nature to think of me first, um, but I think this year taught us that that doesn't work. So can we rebuild the bridges between the international community, the international forums, whether it's the UN, EU, uh, the World Health Organization, um, uh, umbrellas uh, such as the WEF provide, if we don't reach out to each other. And I, I, I've seen, for example, um, in our uh, one of our neighbors, I mean, the Israelis have had a very successful rollout of the vaccine. Uh, however, the Palestinians have not. Well, if you look at the connectivity of the Israeli-Palestinian people, you can't vaccine one part of your society and not the other and think that you're going to be safe. That's that's the number one lesson that COVID taught us, that COVID does, it does not care about borders, the rich or the poor or, or whoever. Um, and I can see, again, Israeli um, uh, businesses that have Palestinian um, uh, employees saying, OK, I'm vaccinated and if half of my people are not, we're never going to be able to come over this. So I think that has to be Maybe if I can say, move away from politics to practicality. We've got to look at the practicalities and the challenges that are ahead of us to be able to communicate with each other and realize that we are one world, one small village, and talk to each other in dignity to be able to really start, I think, the new phase after COVID of what the world should look like. Your, your Majesty, this um, virtual Davos uh, was really and is a great mobilization process to make everybody aware. We are the crucial moment of the history of humankind. We will come together. You mentioned the word practicality uh, in Singapore in end of May. And I look very much forward uh, to welcoming you, Your Majesty. And on behalf of all those who have joined us this morning, thank you very much. Thank you for your wisdom and thank you also for the long-standing partnership with the World Economic Forum. Thank you, my friend, and thank you all for watching. Thank you.